Hello everyone, my name is Trevor and I'm getting ready to start a new live stream for one of my favorite systems, Hyperborea, which is a classic D&D OSR style game. And today we're going to be talking about how to make characters in Hyperborea. Uh, and if you are interested in joining our Discord, you can learn more about Hyperborea and maybe even get a chance to play in one of our community games. But now let's dive in and figure out character creation today on Rolling with Advantage. So before we dive in today and take a look at how to create a character, I do want to state that this is going to be for the second edition of the game. The third edition of this uh, system is coming out later this year in December. You can find out more about that at Hyperborea.tv, but I feel that the character creation for the two systems are going to be very, very similar. Uh, so that being said, when we start our game uh, for our live stream, um, we are going to be running second edition and it will probably transition to third edition as it comes out. So what we're looking at here is on the left side of my screen, you're going to see the Hyperborea um, character sheet. You can pull that off of their website under resources, or you can go to my Discord under Hyperborea. There's a character creator uh, channel, and I've got a link to it there as well. Uh, so that's what's going to be on the left. On the right side of my screen, I've got the PDF to the uh, second edition book. Now, in Hyperborea, uh, they really, when the game came out, it's 600 pages. It's all one book. So this is basically like a player's manual, DM guide, monster manual and adventure all in one book so super super cool I, I love the value of having everything together they did come out and come out with a a smaller version just for players and we're going to see that as we move into third edition a separation of the books but if you're playing this and for the pdf it's massive uh so i'm going to be referencing uh character page as we do the character creation i am going to be referencing the pages that you can find this uh, to kind of help you you know kind of streamline the process okay so um, it's really not overly difficult as we dive in. Um, if for anyone who's played D&D in the past, you're going to say, wow, this is really similar. Uh, even though this is going to be playing back towards like a second edition D&D, uh, if you are new to that OSR vibe and you're more of a fifth edition player, you'll see a lot of things that kind of carry over. Uh, a lot of the verbiage and things like that are the same. All right. So that being said, uh, we're going to turn to page five of the, uh, the book. And right there we have character creation. And we're going to scroll down. Uh, to page six and go to attributes. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we have to determine our stats. Now, there are five ways in the book to do it. Um, and then they've got like a little way that you can kind of boost your stats after that. Uh, do note that there's not a lot of ways in this game to, to move, like bump your stats up once you create your character. So pretty much the way your character is in the beginning is the way he's going to be. Uh, but don't feel that you need like these super crazy high stats like we see in like a fifth edition game. Um, the numbers in this game are just a lot different. In second edition, having really, really high uh, stats for D&D were unheard of, really. You, maybe you'd have one character that had a really crazy good stat, but that was about it. Uh, so for this, what we're looking at is we're going to do uh, method five for our game. This is how we're going to be making it today. Uh, I find that this method here uh, gives us the ability to um, kind of have good middle-of-the-road stats with a chance of having one or two high ones, and then uh, we'll go from there. So we're going to be using method five, which is roll 2d6 plus six for each attribute in order of strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Now, what that means is that your first roll is going to be your strength, your second roll is going to be dex, and then so forth and so on. Now, um, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showcasing a character that my brother, Chris, who's going to be in our live stream, uh, this is his character, and I'm going to be kind of like shadowing what we did offline to kind of show. So what we're looking at here on the left are the attributes that he rolled. He rolled a 10 for strength, he rolled a 13 for dex, 10 for constitution, 14 intelligence, and then 12 for wisdom and charisma. Now, he's a big Conan fan, so he's like, hey, I want to play um, a Chimerian, which is going to be his race. Now, when it comes to race, um, this game, you are you have lots of options of what you want to play as far as the race goes, but they're all variations of human. Statistically, there are no change differences between playing a, a Chimerian versus a Viking versus a Celt. There's just a lot of different flavors, uh, but you're all basically, this is a human-based game. There are no elves, dwarves, and things of that nature. Uh, it's just the style of this game. So think more of the world of like Conan or, or Lovecraft or something like that, where it's more, it's humans versus the monsters and the weird that's out there. Uh, so that's what 
being that said, he's a big Conan fan. My brother is. So he's like, hey, I want to play a, a Chimerian, which is their version of a Sumerian. Uh, so we put that in there. So that is his race. As we go in here and we take a look at his stats, you've got, you know, like I said, 10, 13, 10, 14, 12, 12. All right. So then he's the question is, okay, well, I what what class do you want to play? And in this game, there are lots of classes. There's four base classes that you can choose from, and then there's 22 subclasses. Now, that doesn't mean that you start in one and then branch off to another. You pick which one of those. A base class would be like fighter, uh, cleric, uh, magician, or thief. Now, those are fully-fledged characters, um, but they're very hyper-focused on what they do. Uh, then you have 22 subclasses, which are kind of like hybrids of different things. Uh, one of the things that I love about this game is that there are there's no multi-classing. Uh, the, the, if you want to play a multi-class character, you can basically pick a subclass, which is a multi-class. Uh, so my brother, being a big Conan fan, says, hey, I want to play a barbarian. It's like, perfect. So a barbarian in this game is going to be basically your fighter thief. Um, so he's going to have a little bit of the thief abilities and skills, and then he's also going to be a really good fighter. So in order to do that, we have to look at, well, what are the prerequisites for being a barbarian? Uh, and I take a look at his stats, and he's not there. So let me show you what he has to be in order to be a barbarian. What he's got to get to stat-wise to be a barbarian. So as we turn to page 25 of the of the book, um, we have a, this amazing art. <laughs> I love the OSR feel of this game. And we see what the barbarian is. It has like a little blurb about a, a barbarian. If we scroll down, we get uh, to page 26 and then into page 27. There's two full pages that kind of explain what a barbarian is. The first thing that we're going to look at here is his attribute requirements. He needs a 13 and Strength, Dex, and Constitution, and his prime attributes are Strength and Dex. So, right now, looking at what he rolled, he can't be a Barbarian. However, the system kind of allows you uh, this the, this way to create a character to kind of help get you where you want to be. Attribute Adjustment on page 5. It says, an attribute can be raised one point if another is reduced by two points. Such modifications may be made as many times as desired before producing a final set of attribute scores. An attribute cannot, however, be raised to 18. Only the luck of the dice should produce such an exceptional result. Okay, so now that we know that, we have to go back and say, all right, we need 13 in strength, dex, and constitution. And this is what my brother did. He basically moved all of his back-end stats down. Uh, to kind of get to the stats that he wanted. And so we ended up, you know, dumping charisma down to six. By taking it down six points, that got us three points to put into another stat. Well, that's where we got our constitution up to 13. He then said, okay, I want to get my strength up. Uh, I need, he wanted a 15 in strength. In order to do that, we've got to drop 10 out of other stats. So we took six out of intelligence, got that down to eight. And then he took four out of Wisdom and got that down to eight as well. Okay, so here's where his stats would land. 15, 13, 13, 8, 8, 6. So in this game, an 8 would be considered average. And anything under that would be under. So he is not charismatic at all. He's average intelligence. He's average in the, in the realm of Wisdom. But a 13, a 13, and a 15, those are exceptional scores um, in this world. So you just have to think that the, the numbers of this are a little bit lower than we're used to seeing like a fifth edition game or something like that. Now, the next part of character creation is we're going to go through now that we've got our attributes and we've got to fill in some numbers here. Okay. So under strength, we look and you say he has a 15. There's a chart here as we scroll down to page seven, and that tells us that our attack modifier and damage adjustment is plus one. So we go over here and we put plus one. And then after that, we look at test of strength is three of six. So test of strength, what that means is, is that he has basically a 50% chance of doing something, uh, you know, pretty heroic with his test of strength. And what it says here is that, you know, you open a, a stuck or locked door, move a rusted lever, perform a similar task that requires muscle power, okay? If the situation is appropriate, multiple attempts may be made. The referee may adjust test of strength uh, based on the circumstance. So basically, the base for this character to do something heroic, you know, with his strength is three and six. Extraordinary feat of strength. What this allows us to do, the probability of success for strength, feats of heroic stamps, such as bending the bars of a jail cell, breaking manacles, lifting a board close. Okay, so to do something crazy, 
um, he gets a percentage of that. So if we look at, at 15, he's got a 16% chance to do that. However, since this is a prime stat for him, it says if strength is a prime attribute, the character gains an additional plus 8. So that makes it 24% chance. So he's got a 24% chance to do really, really crazy stuff. Um, you know, moments of absolute crazy heroic, you know, giant strength kind of thing. All right, so now that we've got that, we're going to roll over to Dexterity, and we're going to do the same thing. We look at a 13 against whenever he's using an attack modifier for a missile attack. This is like a bow or throwing something. He gets a plus one to his attack. Now, this is just for uh, the attack modifier. This is not damage. Now, uh, defense adjustment, he gets plus zero, so he's not you know getting like extra defense for being super nimble. His, text of de his test of Dexterity is a three of six. Um, so this is basically how, instead of having like an athletics or an acrobatics role, it, it uses this. It's a little bit simpler. Uh, and then feat of dexterity uh, for 13 has an 8%, but this is another prime stat for him. So that doubles, gives another 8% down here as we look at here. So that's going to go up to 16%. It's not doubled in the sense, it's just that he got an 8 plus an 8. Okay. Uh, and now we go down to Constitution. On Constitution, he has a 13, which gives him a plus one to his hit point adjustment. Now, that's really, really key. And I will say, when I played this game before, my friend Laz had a character that had an 18 Constitution. And we found that that Constitution may be one of the best stats in this game because it's such a brutal game that having high Constitution is very, very important. So getting these extra hit points is huge. Now, Trauma Survival is 80%. Um, trauma survival is an interesting mechanic in this game because what this basically does is the likelihood of surviving a system transformation of shocking degree, such as paralysis or petrification. It also represents the chance one has to be successfully resurrected from death. Um, so having that pretty high is a good thing. Uh, test of constitution for him again is going to be a three in six. And then uh, also his t extraordinary feat of constitution is an eight. Now, this is not a prime stat for him, so it just stays at eight. All right, uh, and that's that's pretty much everything we've got here. Now, I do want to talk about the hit point adjustment. A bonus or penalty applied to the number of hit points a character receives per hit die rolled. Regardless of modifier, a character always obtains. So every time you level up, you, he gains this extra point as well. So he'll get one at level one, one at level two, and so forth. So getting these extra hit points uh, for your constitution bonus is huge. Now for intelligence, his intelligence is an eight. Um, he does not get any bonus languages, so we put a zero there. Uh, he does not have anything to worry about spells, but if he did, you would see, you, you basically just fill in everything that he needs here. So we're going to kind of skip forward because he's not going to be getting a whole lot here. So zero bonus spells. Okay. Wisdom. He also only knows one language. We're going to go down to Wisdom. So for Wisdom, he gets a willpower adjustment. Now this is be something that he would need for like different types of saves versus like charm or fear. But he's got an 8, so that's just a 0. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about spells because he's a barbarian. For Charisma, he got a 6. So basically all this means is that he's not very good at his loyalty for having like henchmen and followers and things like that. This is more of a role play thing for him. He's not going to be worried too much about how many people he can hire. He can have up to two henchmen or people following him around. And he doesn't going to be using turn undead because he's not a cleric. So we don't have to worry about those things. Okay, so this is where we are. Uh, pretty simple so far. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go, uh, now that we've got all of this, we're going to go back to the Barbarian page. 26, and from here we're going to see his hit dice. Now his hit dice here is a 12, which means every time that he receives a level, he gets a 12. Now in my games, I always put level 1 characters that they roll the max. So his hit point is going to be 12 plus his 1 for constitution, which is going to be 13. So that's his starting hit points. Now, uh, we look over here and as far these are just things to know. Like armor, shields, weapon, he can use anything. Now, as far as saving throws, he gets a plus two bonus to all saves. So we're going to put plus two on all of these. So now when you look over here and it says saving throw, this is basically what is your base number. This changes in this game by the level. Uh, as you level up, this number will change. And then you basically when you roll, you add this number and you have to hit that number in order to beat a save. 
Okay, so in order to find where your saving throw is, um, it's on page 259 under saving throw. This is in the spell section. I feel like, uh, I hope in 3rd edition, maybe this gets moved up to the character creation so that we're not having to dig around for this. Uh, but basically, this is the table that we're going to be using. So for saving throw, if he's level 1, it's a 16. So that's what he has to roll in order to be to save, is a 16. Okay, now... He gets to roll a plus two. So basically, in this game, he's got to roll a 14 or better on saving throws. And that number will change as he levels. But if you'll notice, it doesn't go up often. Like, it's it's one point every other level. So saving throws in this game are difficult. That being said, magic is also weird, kind of rare. Um, so it just shows you how, how deadly magic is in this game. All right, so now let's circle back and go find out some more about our character. Okay, so going back to page 26 of the Barbarian, we have to go find some other things that we have to fill in here. All right, so for fighting ability, he's going to start right here. If you look at the chart, this table 12, he gets a one fighting ability. Okay, so this game does use Thacko. It doesn't say Thacko, but if you are used to second edition D&D, &D, you'll, you'll be familiar with it. If you're in fifth edition person, your head just exploded, um, <laughs> not knowing how to, how to, how to work this. It's not overly difficult. Basically, the way the game works is back in the day, if something you wanted a lower armor class. So if your armor class was six, what that meant was is that if, if someone had a, a roll, you would take 20. He would subtract your six to 14, and that's what he has to roll. So the armor class is 14. So now in fifth edition, we just say 14. But back in the day, and because this is kind of a throwback to those old days, that's we're going with the lower the armor class number, the better. But here's where it gets super confusing is whenever you go look at an ability that says agile, like the barbarian has a plus one to his AC when unarmored. So you actually are adding a negative here. So uh, instead of it being like, oh, I've got an 11 AC, like you would think in fifth edition, it's not. So in this game, if you have nothing on, your AC is nine. He gets plus one, which brings it down by one to eight. I know it's super confusing, but it's once you get used to it, it's not that big a deal. So this character wearing absolutely nothing but a loincloth, his armor is eight. Now, if he picks up a shield, that'll change it. If he picks up any armor, it'll also change it, but then he loses his agile as well. So there's a lot of things you have to look at for this. Now, if we go back and look over here to his dexterity, his attack modifier, did he get a defensive adjustment? He did not. So we don't have to worry about that either. Okay. Now for movement. Uh, now this game, now in 5th edition D&D, we're all talking about movement is, you know, 30, 35 feet, depending on the race. In this game, the base movement is 40. Uh, unless you're wearing armor, that can slow you down. Or if you have some ability to make you faster. If we look over here, the barbarian does have run. It says to sprint as swiftly as a tiger. Base is 50 when unencumbered and lightly armored or unarmored. So he is faster. Uh, and that will double if you are running. Okay, so from here, the rest of everything that we've got to fill out has to do with your inventory. Now, your inventory will change you know, throughout the game, but your starting abilities and your starting equipment will be found on, we have to go to the equipage page, which can be found on page 128 into 129 of the second edition book. Now, so the barbarian here starts with studded armor, a small shield, a dagger, a bastard sword, short bow, uh, arrows, backpack, bandages, fishing net, hunting horn, soft leather pouch, large sack, three torches, and a full wine skin. Now, if you were playing in a regular game, you would take all of that and you would just move it over here and then you would basically fill in the character sheet based off of what that is. So we would go up and look at what your armor class for studded armor is and that would what we put in for your AC. We would also adjust your movement. So let's go ahead and show for the example of what that looks like here. So basically what we're going to do is we take a look, and he gets studded leather, so that is a 6, so your AC here would be 6. Now, you would lose your plus 1 uh, for this particular character for being unarmored, uh, so that would just be a 6. And then also with a shield, he gets a small shield, he gives you a plus 1. So again, we're not going plus 1 to 7, we're going plus 1 to 5. I know it's weird, you'll get used to it. So this character would start the game out at armor of 5. The reason I'm not putting it on the sheet 
is because uh, in our story, the characters are uh, basically escaped slaves, uh, cr- shipwrecked on an island, and he has no gear to start the game. So this is where, for uh, his character sheet, we stop because he's going to have to find his weapons, his armor, and his shield, and kind of scavenge the land. Kind of, you know, that's how we're starting our game. But for the example, if you were wanting to build a character, uh, normally you would take, you know, your starting equipment and just kind of add it onto here. Now. Uh, right here we have this thing called Combat Matrix. Um, for those of you who have never played um, a second edition game, you might want to just leave this alone. Uh, for those of you who have and you're used to, basically what this does is it says, okay, let's take all of your stats and you kind of fill in the matrix and say, if I roll this number, then I hit this armor class. And that's what this looks like. So target AC is a 9. Uh, if someone had an AC of 9, this is what I have to roll to hit an AC of 9. And that's how the game used to be. You would roll the dice, and then you would tell your DM, I hit an AC of 5. And they would tell you if you hit or not. Um, however, games have kind of changed since then. I don't technically use the, ma- the combat matrix. I just tell my player, what did you roll? And I'm thinking, in my mind, backwards, what I know what the armor is to, to, to hit the guy. And we just kind of work it that way. Uh, so some people love the combat matrix. Some people don't. Uh, it just depends on where you are uh, in in your gaming. Um, it's not like a, you know, if you're not good enough to use combat matrix, it's just a style of thinking. If you grew up with this and you're used to it, great. And if not, it's no big deal. I grew up with it and I don't use it. So <laughs> it just depends on where you are with it. All right. So for class abilities, um, this is the way that I tell my players to do this. Um this is basically a cheat sheet on your character sheet to come in and say all of the things that a barbarian can do with his alert or with all you know his wilderness survival and all those things. You put all that here as a cheat sheet. However, what I like to do when I tell my players to do is print out the pages that your character is on. There's only two pages, and I basically add that as part of my character sheet. So I'm not flipping through a book. I'm not having to figure something out. Just print those two pages out. Put it with your character sheet. You can use this if you want to as a cheat sheet, or you can just have that with you, whatever is easiest for you. Uh, some I've seen people do a mix of both. All right. Um, now, down here, we also have you know your turn undead. If you were a cleric, you would put your stats in here for that. If you were a sorcerer or a spellcaster or some sort, you'd put your spells on here. Uh, I may do another video for that later, but basically you're just filling in uh, this this information here. Um, now, experience points are going to be important because in our game, we are going to keep up with individual experience points. This system and on old OSR systems, it's hard to do things like um, leveling up uh, like we normally do with 5th edition, which is like, you know, every level, every game or two, you get a level. This game, you really need to keep up with experience points because different classes level at different rates. Um, because they, the creator of the game understands, and this is the way it was back in the day, that certain classes have power spikes. So what they would do is, is the, the class that, you know, hit really hard at second level may level a little bit slower or faster than the other class. So it's all like a balancing. A thief levels faster than the barbarian. Because the barbarian, it's almost like you're leveling two classes at once. For a barbarian, it's going to take him longer to level, but he's leveling basically a fighter and a thief at the same time. Uh, so that's the way that that works. Uh, and then I will let my brother fill this out here, but this is where at the very end where you put your age, height, weight, hair, things of that nature. All right. So for secondary skills, uh, this is something part of the character creation. Um, he rolled basically his background of what he did before he set off on his adventure. He was a cobbler. He made shoes, uh, which may also be, you know, leatherworking, that type of thing. This is just here to kind of give your character a little bit of background. And I, it's a challenge I put forth to myself and other DMs is to find a way to make this useful in the game. You know, uh, if he's a cobbler, maybe he's good with small tools uh he's good with leather uh and things of that nature so it's a way to kind of like what are things of the world that he would understand uh based on the fact that you know maybe this was a trade passed down he made good sturdy boots um and then languages um he is a common uh in intelligence person and he only speaks the common language so uh and then for this is where you'd also put the rest of your uh gear as well so this is where we are with character creation. Uh, it's pretty simple. If you're playing in our game on Discord, what you would do is save this PDF and put it into the Active Characters channel. Uh, again, if you want to join in our, our game, our community game, uh, you can join our Discord. I'll put a link down below. Um, it's not terribly difficult to make a character. We can do it pretty quick once you get used to it. It's just filling in a bunch of little numbers. The game is a little crunchy for numbers. Uh, there is no advantage and disadvantage system. It is more like, hey, I need to know what numbers I get for doing different things and it's not that bad 
Uh, so this is where we are with character creation. So this is going to be our first of our... We have three core players in our game. This is our first character. Uh, my brother Chris will be playing a Chimerian Barbarian. Uh, and he will be, of course, starting at first level. Um, naked and afraid on a beach after a shipwreck is where these characters are starting. Um, so we are starting that on Monday nights at 8.30 over on our Twitch channel. I'll put a link down below if you want to follow us. Uh, so until next time, let's keep rolling with advantage and hope to see everyone soon in Hyperborea. Talk to you soon. Bye.